My old min trapping, I use basically uh, four different sets and I use three different traps. We're going to show that to you right here. Uh, one of the ones I use is a mink box. This is basically, this, this is the same dimensions as the weasel box that I make. The only thing that's different is I don't put a front cover on it and then I flip it upside down. I put a killer clip in there and I hold a, a 120. I don't use a 110 because it's not going to be under the water. And if you don't get a good catch on a 110, you're not going to kill a mink. Um, and sometimes I do catch coon in here. And I want to make sure that uh, when they stick their head in there, I'm going to get a good clean kill. And I always make sure that I wire it off or cable it off to something solid. Um, all I do for my mink boxes, I throw a uh, part of a muskrat. You use anything, but don't use the guts. I usually just cut the hindquarters off, throw them in the back. I put a little uh, mink. I use Lennon's uh, all call or mink call lure. Put a little bit of that on there. Um, some of them I cover with grass, some I don't. I haven't found that it works any better putting grass over it than it does not. I've had, I've had them avoid both, and I've had them go into both. So if there's grass available, um, I'd, I'd throw some grass over it. But otherwise, you know, I, I really don't worry about it. The other thing I use, I use a Duke one and a half coil spring. I use this for a blind set which means along a bridge or something where they're going to be walking along the edge, I'll use it. And then I'll use this for pocket sets. And same thing, I bait my pocket sets uh, either with some fish or uh, um, uh, part of a muskrat. For my bottom edges, I got just one of these patio block bricks. I mounted a counter bear keeper on it. Drilled a hole, you put a little uh, insert in there and you can screw that in there. Holds a 110 really nice. You can slide this up under the bank um, and stuff like that. You know, put it inside culverts, put it inside bridges. It works really good. And then again, I just wire it off and it's good to go. I use a 110 under the water because even if I don't get a really good quick kill, it's going to drown them so I don't have to worry about it. And then the other thing I use is a 110 on a little holder here. I, paint, I just paint the tops blaze orange so I can find them in the weeds. And what I use this for is like when I'm down on the rivers and, I, and I'll find a little uh, uh, like a mink trail going through the grass or something, I'll use this to stake it in there. Um, and also little tributaries that come up in, I'll put that down in there when I find a pinch point and it works really good. So them are basically the traps that I use. It's basically the sets that I use. Um, that's pretty much all you got to do. Mink trapping is just a game of time. You get enough sets out there, you're going to have to leave them set. I mean, I've gone as far as three weeks sometimes and never seen a mink track by a trapper and up and then go there and the next day you'll have one. So get as many different kinds of sets out as you can. Leave them sit. Get them out there. Leave them sit. Bait them up. You know, relure them every couple of days and you're good to go. So that's what we do. We'll go out there. We'll show you setting some spots up and then... Uh, Hopefully we'll show you some catches and this is one of them spots guys it's got fur written all over it. Um, you can look here. We got undercut banks there. Uh, we got culverts. We got uh, points coming out, you know, right there. It's a good spot for maybe a 110 right there. You look up, we got another spot right up there. We got a vertical wall right there. And we can stuck stick a 110 right there I mean this is just a huge potential for catching fur so you know we got uh, we can put mink boxes out here so we're gonna set quite a few sets I probably would say when I leave here I'm gonna have at least four maybe five sets set here uh, you really want to take advantage of a spot like this because it has so many opportunities for you to catch fur you should take advantage of every single one so you can uh, I mean, that's the difference between putting fur in the truck and not putting fur in the truck is, is a guy that doesn't take advantages and set them different sets. He's just not going to get as much fur as the, as the next guy. So got a lot of work to do at this spot, um, and then we're going to keep on rolling. Okay, guys, here's an awesome, awesome spot to put a mink box. We got this little babbling brook here, comes down in, meets this major, bigger river here we got a dry dam there 
we got a little pump house this is right right in town where i live here so uh this is just a super 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 killer spot i mean you got a lot of intersections right here yeah, it's a major travel way they're coming up that river um, inside that culvert right there i got uh, one of the bottom edge sets so i put that in there um, it, 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 this has just been a it's a great producing spot for me but like i said a lot of times you miss them in the bottom edge set for some reason he comes along you know you're going to want to get him in the in the uh, mink box um, you know if you could put in a pocket set that's awesome I have trouble with pocket sets this time of year because when I start mink trapping, it's late in the year, it's in December, and it's freeze up. We talked about that before. But uh, let me get this box set up right here, right on this point is where I'm going to set it. And uh, we're going to pretty much explain everything that I do or done. <laughs> we got the mink box. We got our 120 in there. We're going to get that set. Just. I'm going to tuck it back in there a little more. We got our muskrat inside there. Just the, the back end of our muskrat. Uh, we we'll run our cable and cable it off. And then when I'm all done, I spray my whole set down with mink urine. Mink have a killer, killer, killer good nose. So um, I, I, human scent control is not huge on a mink set but I think it's very important that you spray some mink uh, urine around your set and uh, I like to use a mister. I really really like these points when it comes to trapping mink with my mink boxes. You can see we got the river comes here, goes right up there, there's the truck, goes through the culverts, but right here it comes in. You can see it comes in to this other little creek. Mink will 99% of the time when they come to a spot like this they will go in here to investigate so we got our uh, mink box set right here comes off the river and this little bit of cut so they're either going to be coming in from down river they're going to come in they're going to swim they're going to hug the edge and they're going to come in this little opening right there and go up here and do a little hunting and we're going to get them coming out to go further up river or they're going to be coming down river and do just the opposite so either way they're pretty much going to come right by this mink box again i got some uh lennon's uh mink all call gland lure right there got our 120 um sprayed everything down with mink urine uh i didn't really have a place to cable the trap here so again these little bricks come in handy you know i use them on my bottom edges um inside uh, bridges and stuff like that and i also use them uh you know you run a cable through them and you can quick just connect and you just throw it out there it's very important that you guys uh anchor these uh traps down because there's a really really good chance that a coon will come along and stick his head in there um i have had coon caught by the leg in a 120 and it's held them um I would say 80% of them I, I, I get around the head. I don't even know what a big coon thinks he can stick his little head through that little hole for, but they do, and they're pretty much stone cold dead. That's why I don't use uh, 110s when I'm trapping me. When you guys are looking for these uh, mink trapping spots, don't rule out these dry culverts. You know, mink don't need water. They're not a water animal. They're just a land animal that frequents the water. And as you can see, we got a dry culvert here. We just went and set our mink box right there. So we got a bunch of mink tracks coming in and out of that culvert. And there's no water, open water. There's probably no open water within three miles of this place. So don't rule out them dry culverts. Okay, folks, I just wanted to show you um, a river here that comes down, comes through a culvert, goes under the road. But there's no tributaries, no real definite points that I would key in to put a mink box. So I want to show you how I'd set this up. I'm a firm believer in mink use their nose a lot more than people think. So I would say, make sure that I set this. Um, this river right here runs from the north flowing to the south. So I'm going to set the west side of the creek. That way uh, 
the prevailing winds will carry the scent across the creek. So if you can see, I got a mink box. I said another right. great spot for uh, for a mink box. We're gonna put it right there on that corner. You can see the main river in the background. It's got that cut, makes that point. Uh, river goes through the culvert right there. So we'll have a mink box there. We'll probably do a bottom edge. We've got a vertical bank over here by the culvert. We'll do a bottom edge set there might do a pocket set but i just wanted to show you just that spot right in there how that comes through and i mean the mink are going to come down that river they're gonna they are gonna turn into here to do a little hunting so okay guys i want to show you what i'm looking at when i'm talking about these undercut banks i got my little yard stick i grabbed out of the truck it's gonna work out here pretty good if you see this thing goes i mean right there i'm 30 inches back and it starts coming back out you can feel a bunch of debris start building up and then right here i got it it only goes in about eight inches so what's happening is this river's coming here and it's got this bank hollowed way out and then right here it starts coming back and then it goes you know starts to go cut way back in again so right here is where we're going to put our 110 conibear. bear. I'm gonna take and slide that right under there. And that's it. Now what happens is that muskrat and them mink are swimming underneath that bank. And they're gonna hit that debris and they're gonna follow it out. And right, right where that debris makes that corner, that's basically a point, they're gonna hug that. And that's gonna put them right straight through our 110 right there. So that's just a killer spot. That's the undercut banks that I'm talking about. That's what you want to set. Great for muskrat and mink. Huge muskrat set. I catch a lot of them. Um, let me show you a spot here that produces fur for me every year. Got this small little river, runs on the long side of the road. It's kind of like a little ditch, um, but it cuts back in here. And it's really pretty small, but it flows pretty fast and it stays open. All, all pretty much all year but back in this thing here there's private property there's some uh, some irrigation ponds and uh, they tend to kind of freeze out and there ain't much food in there through you know so the muskrats really start filtering down through here and this spot will produce every year anywhere between five and ten muskrats and at least one or two mink but let me show you what I've done down in here I've taken this culvert and I and I take and I blocked it off pretty much except for that little spot right there. And I stick a 110 in there. And uh, you'll see, this will be a spot where you're going to okay, see guys. It's like I say, it's always about multiple sets. Um, pocket sets, box, uh, mint boxes, uh, bottom edges. So I like to try to get at least two different styles. If I can't, three different style sets at each spot. It's going to help me pick up more fur. You can see we got a river runs into a culvert here, but it's also another little river runs right here, goes into the same culvert. Water's moving pretty fast. Can't really set anything in the culvert. It plugs up with weeds and, and leaves and stuff. But you can see I got two logs that come out right there. Perfect place to put a, a mink box right up on top of them logs. And then we got a pretty nice undercut bank right here. And if you can see right there, I stuck me a 110 and a bottom edge. So, you know, hopefully we come here tomorrow and we got a mink in the box and a muskrat in the bottom or mink and mink or maybe just a muskrat. But I try, I'm going to be here anyways. I might as well try to set for multiple, multiple animals. So multiple sets. Um, so this is just another good spot. We're going to keep moving, keep setting out traps, show you some more. Okay, folks, got our pocket dug here. You can see I dig a pretty good size pocket. That's because I like my trap to sit up inside my pocket. Um, and then I got it way back here is where I'm gonna set my bait. I made a little shelf back there. I take my muskrat and I set him, tuck him up back in there, just like so. So he's tucked back in there. Then I got my one and a half coil spring. And you want to make sure 
but that's under oh inch water there just like that now some people say put the dog in some people say put the dog out I like to have my dog towards one side or the other that just gives me a good saw when they hit it it's usually a good solid wraps around them so that's pretty much that we're at our again mink mink urine just spray it around little lenins take a little lenins on a stick and I'll put it right above the pocket right here and that's the that's that set we're pretty much done there good spot here is a here's a great place to make a blind set this right here is a, a natural trail that comes down through here so we got a conner bear right there plugging up the plugging up the entrance it's just a good spot they like to you know you find them natural trails that's killer spot for muskrat and mink so we'll leave that sit and right, see got another great mink spot right here we got this little river stream brook creek whatever you guys want to call it goes up there until the road goes through a culvert but right here we have a small uh, spring that's feeding water into here this right here is going to stay open year round it's not going to freeze because the water's you know it's moving through there and it's coming out at a perfect temperature but i guarantee you every mink that's going to come up and down this river is going to go in there and investigate that spot so we're going to put a blind set in we're going to stake we're going to put a one and a half coil spring right there so we got it all staked off here Got it cabled off to a tree actually. And we're gonna put that right there. Get it down just a little bit below the opening. That's perfect right there. Don't need to camouflage it, don't need to do nothing. That's just how it's gonna be. Like I said, every mink, you know, if he's coming one way, and they're, they're gonna go through there and they're gonna step on that. It's pretty much a guaranteed deal. So, spot for uh, a blind set. Got a culvert here, um, river running through it, but it comes up here, and you can see where the water, there's kind of some gra little gravel bar there. This set right here will take mink, coon, muskrat, otter, you name it, it takes, takes it all. So you better have it anchored pretty good. I got a big old brick right here, and what I did... Get some rocks here, and you can kind of use it as guide. You really don't have to. Um, I just do it kind of for security reasons. But what happens is anything that's going to come walking through here is going to keep its side right along the edge of this culvert here. So you want to put uh, the dog facing in right along the edge, just like that. And that's a, that's a perfect, perfect, perfect blind set main reason I tell you guys that you got to cable these traps off or stake them off or whatever because as you can see we got our mink box here trap is gone and right over here we got a coon not a very big coon but he was uh he's caught perfect right behind the head um, a little bit forward this is in a 120 so you know, we got him, but if you wouldn't have had that trap cabled off, you know, Lord knows where he would have went. So just as I can say a precaution, cable them traps off or stake them off or wire them off to something and, you know, and we'll, uh, well, we'll get him out of here. We'll get the trap set and we'll keep on rolling. All right, we have our mink box and the bottom edge set that we set here the other day. And I see the conner bear has gone off the brick, so it's a pretty good sign that we scored, maybe. So. Oh yeah, I see muskrat feet. Nice. So yeah, the bottom edge sets, you know, they're they're uh, they're great fur producers. You catch mink and muskrat. I mean, look at the size of this little stream. There's just a ton of people drive by here. Never even, uh, never even think that there's muskrats in here. Nice little river rat. 
Uh, we've got a little chew on his tail. That means uh, there's more than one muskrat here. So we're going to get this baby set again. This little system I got worked out here works pretty, pretty nice. Maybe slid right under there again. And that's it. Here's our mink box. We ain't got nothing in there. Let's keep on rolling. There's them two culverts. Got this little river. And we got this little, uh, channel that goes up in here and we got our we or our mink box right here on the corner and we got us a mink dandy 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 look at that that is a nice nice buck mink big fat guy he'd been eating a lot so that's pretty uh, pretty good i'm happy it's a uh, you know, my second mink this year, and it's only the second day we've had the mink boxes out. So we're going to get this reset and uh, keep on a going. But nice mink. Perfect spot to catch him. Wrapped him right on top of the head. Killed him dead. Awesome. Pretty good day. Right over there is some culverts right on the other side of that. Uh, I got that mink in a mink box this morning. On this side, I got a uh, couple of... Uh, muskrat traps or you know hope to catch a mink but as you can see there's a kind of a trail that comes here goes around this weed thing and I have a muskrat yeah you know you're out here you're trapping these mink you might as well set for these muskrats or you're out there trapping the muskrats you might as well set for the mink that's all about how you make your fur checks bigger. That's a good one there. That's a good river rat. Hey, a nice one. Nice one, nice one, nice one. Let me get this reset here. Well, I'll get this trap reset. And we got our little mink box right there. Ain't got nothing in there. This is that little culvert that I told you about the ponds being way in the back. It's it's just one of them spots that really produce. And today we got something. Oh, we got us a mush rat. Yes, sir. -y. This spot is just a kick. But little spot, I'll tell you. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I love, I love catching that extra fur out here on the mink line. I guess I can't call it a mink line. Oh, he bit the, bit the, there he goes. Can't call it a mink line because I'm out. I got, I got mink traps out. I got muskrat traps out. I got late season coon and skunk traps out so I guess it's just a just a trap line I mean the secret to doing all of this guys and catching all of this stuff is uh, diversifying put as many traps in as you can possibly run for as many different species so let me get this set and we'll get moving down the line all right we got our spot the little two logs going up got our mink box right there and i've got a bottom edge set right there we caught a muskrat in it yesterday today i see a floating mink you know guys i'll tell you when i first started figuring out these bottom edge sets i've always set on the bridges um, but when i learned how to do them out here in the in the streams and the rivers I mean the first time it worked I was like hmm wow it really works and uh, took me a year a couple years and I've been practicing and learning where to set it and I'll tell you it's just been a huge huge producer for me for uh, my mink and muskrat on these little rivers and streams and creeks I mean look at how wide this thing is it's uh you know right there is only three foot wide 
and we go up there you know I could probably put another bottom edge right there but you know, this one's producing oh yeah nice one small smaller buck Yeah, I tell you, you guys aren't using these bottom edge sets. You're uh, you're letting a lot of fur swim by. I mean, it is it is awesome on mink, but it is friggin' deadly on muskrats. Get up in there, and that's it. It's set. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, we got another one of them bottom edge sets. We got this stream that's coming here and it makes a real, the, the bank makes a real hard turn. When the muskrats and mink come swimming down here, they're gonna hug that edge. And we got a real straight edge, so it's a perfect spot to put a 110 kind of bear. Right there, another one of them river muskrats. It's just extra fur, people don't, uh, most people wouldn't even trap these spots for muskrats, but I'll tell you, I pick up quite a few extra ones just by setting these spots. So we'll get this baby set and we'll get them moving on down. All right, guys, let me show you another little killer spot for muskrats and mink. You see, we got this river here, and we got this little tributary that comes in. And we get right down to a pinch point. Right there, I got a trap, and we got us a muskrat. See how that is? You come up in there, and you want to find one of them narrow spots. See how wide that is all through there? And we got this little narrow spot. Just stick a trap in there. They'll come. It's pretty... Uh, Pretty crazy, but it works. So get this muskrat out of the trap, get this reset. Hey guys, this is that spot I was it. telling you it was just gonna be a huge fur producer. There's the two culverts. Um, I got a mink down on the point the other day. Uh, I got a muskrat right down there on the bottom edge set. Today, you see I got a coon right there in a the pocket set. Go over here. Oh, that's a nice coon, too. That's a big boy. We'll have to, uh, gonna have to dispatch him and remake the set. He didn't tear it up too bad, so that's a good thing. All right, well, I'll take care of this bad boy and we'll, uh, we'll just reset this and keep moving down. But like I said, man, there's spots like this that are just gonna produce fur like there's no tomorrow. So, you know, three days worth of checks here and I got uh, three different critters so that's pretty awesome all right well we'll get this one gone and get her going all right we got our little uh, little muskrat run comes right down through there now I had this trap set uh, for a few days I caught a caught a muskrat in it um, and then I for some reason I'd moved the trap over this way some and it went for three, four days, and it didn't dawn on me. I gotta hug that. If you can see them weeds come down right there and they make that curve, that inside bend right there. That's where you want your trap. You want your, the edge of your trap touching that inside bend because they're gonna hug that when they come. So I did that yesterday, redid that, and today, got another muskrat. So no matter what you're doing when you're trapping these muskrats, you know, them inside bends are very important. So as you can see, that's a pretty big, pretty wide area right there to be covering with a little 110. You'd think they'd go around it, but no, if you hug that right there, that inside where that, that, that weeds make that curve, that's where you're gonna pick up your muskrats and your mink. So I'll get this guy out of here, get this trap reset, hey guys, and uh, real quick, this is why I run as many sets as I do, different types. You can see, we got cold weather last night. We are frozen. 
used to have a pocket set over there froze in not gonna work had a blind set right there froze in not gonna work now if you had a pocket set right there it's froze in it's not gonna work you know that's why <coughs> pocket sets are awesome I love using pocket sets but when this cold weather hits it shuts you right down you know you come over here we are froze froze in but I got a mink box right there that's still working it's not my number one producer but guess what when things freeze up it's game on this is, is what you got to use you got to switch I got a bottom edge set right down in there that's still gonna work but so you know be prepared for the weather I leave my traps I, let, I get them in I let them sit for two three some three weeks sometimes a month you know so I got to be prepared for all of that weather changing weather changing water uh, levels just got to be prepared that's why I preach get as many different sets out there as you can when you're mink trap them leave them set so got to keep checking you guys been asking on uh, do a quick video on how to skin a muskrat so I'm gonna do that for you show you I skin them flush them and then put them on the stretcher I'm gonna show you something's pretty cool about well, the way I stretch them but uh, a couple things when you start out here get these muskrats you're probably gonna be wet what you want to do is I hang mine by the front feet and I put a fan on them because if you hang them by the back feet, all the water drips down inside the fur because the fur is used to lay it back like this. So if you hang them by the front feet, all the fur drips out. Uh, another way, if I get too many, you can lay them down on the ground in front of a fan, but don't lay them on their belly. If you lay them on their belly, they'll real quick they'll get green belly and they'll start to get rotten. So lay them on their backs. Another thing, you can roll them up in newspaper, that works. Take an air compressor, blow them out real quick, that works too. So it's a couple ways, but make sure your rat's dry. So we'll get started. First thing you want to do is take and cut from the heel on the back foot, right there by that, you can see about where the fur line is, where the 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 how the long fur hits the short fur. Start right there. Go across. You want to go right to the tail. And you can leave a little bit of that tail on there. You don't have to. Um, if you're using a wire stretcher, go ahead and leave a little bit of that tail. That'll help you when you're stretching. And again, go across. And meet your other cut. There you go. And you're going to peel this back. Now this belly, sometimes this belly likes to stick to the... Uh, to the hide and then you'll end up getting the the guts will kind of come out Let's just get that started a little bit make sure it cuts all the way down yep we're good to go now on the on the back here what you want to do is take where your cut was there you want to run your knife underneath there go around to the other side and then just come out like that so you're done just like that now you don't use a knife a lot on a muskrat, you use mostly your fingers. Then you just start peeling. Back when I was a kid I used to do these things so fast. But just keep working your fingers around the leg, the back leg here. It's like this, work it up in, pull it, and it pulls right off. Same thing on the other side, start on the back, work your finger around. Let's come out by the belly here, get your thumb in there, work them around until your fingers meet, just like that, give it a pull, and it, and it comes right off. You don't need to cut nothing, just like that. Now I like to peel the back before I peel the belly, because the belly is very thin. So I just keep peeling around just like that, peel him right up to his shoulders. And then come around and then you can work this belly by going on the side of it here and that'll help you now you're gonna probably tear more than you don't but right here is the only place you're gonna have to use the knife on the belly is right there where is anal cavity is there you go and then you just pull like I said if you start um, tearing the belly open don't freak out a lot of, it happens to the best of us just like that see it's starting to tear it open 
just so you guys know, man, muskrat is awesome to eat and it's awesome bait. There's probably nothing better in a pocket set by the river than uh, muskrat because everything eats a muskrat, man. Mink eat it. They love it. Coons eat it. Even other muskrats, they don't eat it, but they, they're really attracted to the smell. Get by the front legs. Do the same as you always do. Work your finger around. Pop it through. Pull it up. Just like that, and it'll pull right off. You don't need to cut nothing. Just like that. Same on the other side. And you notice I haven't used a knife at all since I made that initial cut, and then I cut around the the anal cavity. Just give it a pull, it'll tear right off. Done. Now onto the head. Just like that. Pull it down until you get by the ears. One cut there. One cut there. Pull it again until you get to the eye. One cut there. One cut there. Pull it some more. And I got to make my work around the cheek there. Cheek on the other side. And pull it right off. Get him around a little bit more by his cheek. He got smashed pretty good in the 110, so there's his cheek right there. Pull it right down to his nose. Like I said, the more you do, the faster you'll get. Ain't no big deal. Okay, that's it. Done. Now, if you're going to eat this or, uh, or uh, use it for bait, the guts, the heart, the liver, and all of that, that's great for coyote bait. You can cut the uh, hind quarters, you know, use one in each pocket set, front quarters, and then the rest. But we'll save that for bait. Set that off to the side. Now, flesh and a muskrat. I don't use my big flesh and beam. I got a little one. I got this one for mink, and then I do the muskrat on this one. All you're going to want to do on a muskrat is get this extra fat off. And most of the time, I just use a spoon to get it started. Just like that. Come down here. This meat, this little... Uh, you see a lot of this red meat on here? You don't have to get that off. It's called the saddle. It'll dry right up. What you want to do is these white globules of fat. That's all you want to get off. And then I use a knife up here to get this little cheek meat. Be careful. Once you get it started, it just pulls right off. Most of the fat is right in the armpit is where you want to, where you'll get it. Scrape that off with a knife. Be very careful. They're pretty tender. And then down along the edge of the fur here, you'll see a lot of fat. And you just want to get that off. Any of the big chunks of fat, pull that cheek meat off. There's a little bit of fat right there. Give them a once over. A little bit of fat right there. fat down here and he's pretty much done this meat like I said this red meat you see right here it's called the saddle you just leave that on there it'll dry right up all right now for the fun part stretching them this is where my secret comes in been doing this for quite a while see these signs Hire local, whatever, elect so and so, all of that. They're like card, plastic cardboard. After the elections and stuff, go get as many as you can get at the dump. Because these things work awesome as stretchers. All you do is get you a pattern. You could be a wire stretcher, it could be a uh, wooden stretcher. Just lay that baby on there. Just like that. Now make sure you go long ways because you'll see when I get it done here why you got to do that just like that you can draw out you get three of them usually out of it 
just like that. There you go. Dude, I'm telling you, when you guys see this, when this is done, you're going to be like, wow, that's awesome. Take your knife. Cut one out. And take the muskrat hide, get it started on there, and you just kind of pop it, and it'll pop in one spot or in the middle or side, it doesn't matter. Just get your muskrat on there, and get him straight. He's got to get turned around a little bit. Man, just like that. Pull him down. Pop him. Make sure he's straight. Take, and it takes three safety pins to do this. I put one up here in the nose just to hold that. And I take a clothes pin, put it on the side. Another clothes pin on this side. that you'll find your muskrats will even stretch out a little bit bigger doing it this way and we take our other stick pin bring his tail down poke it all the way through same right there poke your hole in there hang him up muskrat done as soon as he's dry you pop that baby out you can save these Year after year after year, you can stack them up and put them in a cardboard box, but these things make awesome, awesome, awesome muskrat stretchers. So there you go. Hope you learned a little bit. Go out there and catch you some.